Morning, it's Friday the 27th of March and we're still on lockdown and we will be for some time. So we're going to make some more stuff, but we're not in the kitchen today. We're in like, at the dining table, in the lounge, in the dining room. Uh, so I was talking to my son and I said, what should we do? And he said, well, you're always farting around lifting your laptop up, resting it on stuff. So I, I rest my laptop on, on, a, on a file like this. Uh, it allows the laptop to stay cooler. It lifts the vents off the, off the, off the table um, and it lifts the screen up because I'm quite tall. So I want the screen as high as possible. So I'm going to make a cardboard version of this. Now, first of all, we need to take some measurements. So the laptop is, when it's in its normal position, it's about 50 mil raised off the table. So I'm just going to write that on a piece of paper. Now we shall turn the laptop over and we'll come back to that later. Just remove that out of the way so you can't see it. Now, the stand is going to look a bit like this. So we're going to have two legs, a back section, So it's going to look a bit like that, very basic. So when you look at it from the side, as you look at it from the side, this will hold up the back of the laptop. This is the main body of the laptop. This is the screen going up here. And it will look like this. I do not need to extend it all the way across there. We can make it shorter. So we'll make this first and we'll see how that goes. So it needs to be longer than my ruler. So I wanted to rest on the rubber feet of this laptop. This laptop has the same sort of rubber feet. So as long as it's the same sort of width, it should work fine. These rubber feet needs to be inside. That needs to be about 290 millimeters. The black laptop, it needs to be a little bit more. So we'll make it for this one, as this is the one I'm using for my video editing and then we'll see what we can do to convert it to suit the other one. So, it needs to be 300, 310 mil. So, we'll put that out of the way now, and we'll come back to that later. So I've got my old Amazon box, uh, so I need a length across the back and two sections that fold down. Uh, it's corrugated cardboard, you can see it bends in certain places much better than others. So, this edge has got Cellar tape on it across the bottom, so we'll use that. That will help us reinforce the edge anyway. So if we're going to come, so this is designing as we go. Normally I design at the start, but we'll design as we go, and we'll come back to that later. If you want to learn how to do designing before you start, then maybe that's something we should look at in a different video. So let's make that 60 mil, and we'll make the other one 60 mil, and then we'll make the distance across the back 310. So. Got my ruler, got my pencil. Uh, so 60 mil to there. Uh, there is somewhere, somewhere for it to bend there. Uh, 310. So that's 300. That's another 10. And then another 60 at the other end. 60. Uh, I've got my trusty old drawing T. So I'm going to try and draw some lines. I'm assuming the bottom of the box is pretty much straight. So we'll use that as a guide. So we've got one there, one the other way around. And it's this one because the middle mark, the little mark was 300, and this one here. Uh, I was going to make it 50 millimetres tall at the back. So that's 50 there, that's 50 there. This is 50 here. Remember this from the phone stand? So it's my bit of old plastic conduit that I found in my garage. Uh, if you want to see if something's straight, look down it. So this way it bends like that. This way it's straight. So I shall use it this way up and not the other way up. So I'm going to put a tick on this side. So I know if I can see the tick, I know the other side, the side I'm drawing along is straight. Certainly straight enough for this exercise. So. This is the start of it, so we will cut that out now. Because I'm on the table, I found a cutting mat. So I'm going to use my cutting mat. I'm not going to cut onto my tablecloth, because we don't want that. I'd get told off, and I think you probably would too. So I've got my ruler. I've got my Stanley knife. Remember, other knives are available.
Careful, don't go off the end. So now we're going to cut this bit. So, it's almost cut through, so I can just fold it up and very gently follow that cut line across. And if I follow it accurately, it just separates the back layer from the front. So I've got this bit. Now, we know when we folded the cardboard on this the other day, uh, if you fold it, if you cut the back and fold it, this side wants to spring back. If you cut the front and fold it, it folds it around quite nicely, but it's maybe not quite as strong. So, let's cut. Which side are we going to fold? This side's got sellotape on it, so I'll leave the sellotape hole, except the lines are on this side, so I'll have to cut this side. So I'm going to just very gently cut through the top layer on this side, I'm trying to follow the line. Do the same at this end. I'm trying to do this in a hurry, but you should not do it in a hurry. So, that's the start. Now, we need to put a slope on this, so that the laptop can sit at an angle. As we're not entirely sure what the slope is, because we didn't measure it at the start, let's take it down a centimetre. If it's too much, the laptop still rests on the back, and if it's not enough, we can change it later. So there is a centimetre. So I've got a centimetre there, and I'm going to put a slope on this side bit that will fold down. So this is the bit that's going to come off. So I'm just scribbling on the waste bit so we know that's the bit we're going to cut off. Same at this end, one centimetre, with my ruler. If you don't have a steel ruler like mine, that's fine. A plastic ruler will do. Waste. I'm also trying to make this video faster, so I can do it in one take, and it's only 10 minutes. Otherwise, no one's going to watch to the end. Then no one does the work. And you won't finish, and you won't start. So, cut this one off. So I've cut through the top layer, I'm going to very slowly and carefully, with my elbow down, if you lift your elbow up it doesn't cut quite as cleanly, if you hold it down the knife blade is lower, and you can follow your cut on the cutting mat nice and accurately. So that's one bit, get rid of that, do the next bit, there's the tick. Uh, notice I'm cutting, my fingers are behind the blade. The blade's going this way, these hands are behind the blade, so that if the blade slips, it's not going to go anywhere near my finger. And even if it slips across the cutting mat, it's still on the mat, it's not on the table. So, how does that look now? So now it does this. Now, what's the biggest problem there? These are not the same length, are they? So somewhere, my measurement went wrong. So that was 60. This was 60. But they are the same length. Okay, so this bends a little bit. So we need to try and stop that bending. We also need to try and make sure these stay in like this. So we're going to make a slot and we're going to put another piece of cardboard across here to hold these together, which will also help to keep the back straight. So a slot is like this. These are my two bits of plywood that I've slotted together using a bandsaw, not something we've got now, now we're on lockdown. Uh, and I would stand my phone in it normally, on my desk at work, and it sits on it like that. Or you can turn it over and have it that way, or anything else, anyway. This is a nice precision slot cut with a machine saw. Doesn't come apart really. Uh, but we don't have a machine saw, so we're going to have to do it by hand. So I need a piece of card that's this long, plus another maybe two centimetres either side. So, this was, oh look, my cutting mat's got measurements on uh, this was, this is now 32. So I need a piece of cardboard that's 32 centimetres long plus 2 centimetres either side. So that's 34, 36. So I'm going to use this edge here and it's going to go all the way up to 36. Oh, there's a pencil line there, so I'm going to use that pencil line anyway. And then we're going to make it this tall, which is 4 centimetres. So four centimetres tall at both ends. 
So we're going to extend that line up to four centimeters. This line's already drawn because it was the other end of part of the bit we cut already, four centimeters. Uh, I've marked out the two ends of my 32, 34, 36 centimetre line. I've drawn along the bottom. Uh, I'm now going to cut it out. So, it's cut from one end to the other using my almost straight edge. Is it straight? It is straight. There's some sort of illusion going on. When I look down on it, it looks like it's curved. But it's not the curvature of the earth. So, hold that still. Almost perfect. Remember, it's cardboard. We're not in a workshop. It's not precision engineering. So if it doesn't go quite right, it's not the end of the world. No one's expecting perfection. We are just looking for useful. So, just going to make sure these are cut down all the way to the bottom. And this one. So, that one. So, making sure I'm on the mat very carefully, I'm just going to cut through this now top layer of cardboard. Get that out of the way. So, now I need to fit this to that. So, first thing first, I could actually use my cutting mat to help me, couldn't I? Since I've got these nice lines. So this is going to go there, I'm just going to put a line here and a line on the other side. This is going to go here, and again I'm going to put a line this side, and a line that side. So I'm now going to cut two slots, I'm going to cut them, uh, it's cardboard, so I'm going to cut them narrow and the cardboard will force its way through. Each slot is going to be half the depth. So you get the slot, which is half in one, half in the other, and they go together and they line up perfectly. So, halfway. So although the pencil lines I've marked are quite wide, because they were at the bottom of the cardboard where it was splaying out, I'm going to cut it much narrower. So it should be fine. Uh, I should do the same here. So I'm very gently going to cut across the top. So that is the top layer, out, and then just make sure that the bottom layer is cut square, so this corner, this, this edge of the blade is vertical, that way I know where it is underneath, I can just cut across, pull it out. Same for this one, vertical blade, vertical, straight across the end. I wouldn't normally work at this sort of speed, but I'm trying to do it quickly so that no one gets too bored. Now, this bit of cardboard is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a bit channels, you can see there, but I need to cut somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to cut on this side of the channel, I think. Or maybe I'll just cut in the middle and we'll see. Later, when I'm a master of video, video editing, I will edit these so that you don't have to watch me do the repetitious tasks again and again. But for now, you're going to have to watch this real time. It's like slow TV. So I've got 30 more seconds of capacity, so I need to be super fast, so let's try and get this together. Uh, so, slot one end together, slot the other end together. So the slotting is super basic, there's my basic stand, here's my laptop, boom, laptop stands up, laptop is nice and cool, we're ready to go. Show me what you can do, put your knife blades away, show me what you can do, tweet me at Mr Oxenham.